Hello, my name is Juan Vidal, and I will be reading from my new novel called A Second Chance on Earth. And it's about a young boy, a 16-year-old boy named Marcos, who loses his father in a tragic accident. And they travel, Marcos, along with his sister and mother, uh, travel to Cartagena, Colombia, to spread his father's ashes and have some type of closure. And in the process, Marcos falls in love with his father's uh favorite novel called 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez and he uses the novel to help him cope and in the process falls in love with stories. All right. A quiet war rages within, non-stop at my mind's door, a clash between what I know is true and something like denial. Time slips and I war on. Some days I move through life numb, convincing myself Bobby is around the corner under the bed, over in the next room. Other times, I wake in a panic, reminded of death in the dead of night. I jump out of bed. It hits me that Bobby is gone, that he will soon be one with the earth. The day it went down felt like the wheels came off, my world broken and split from all sides, the largest shadow cast, as if the sun had gone black and the moon blood red, a hurricane barreling down on all I love, the universe itself handing out its worst and in a big bad hurry, like you drew from a cursed deck of cards and now your house in flames. Occasionally, ever so often, if I get the sudden urge, I'll push out a roar when there's an empty house, an ear-splitting scream or maybe two or three, the kind like fractured bones or getting fingers caught in the car door. It is directed at no one and absolutely everyone. I do it for the heck of it. For the rush, urgent as the tone of the medic as he says, I'm sorry, boy, I'm so sorry. The sound of loss, there's a trapped lion alive and raging inside my lungs. Everything reminds me of what I lost. Fathers and sons everywhere, here, there, and around the way, reminding me that father and son is a thing I once knew, like weekends at the water park, smiling for no reason, piggyback rides, living room sparring sessions, and Bobby's hair that smelled like bread and coconut oil. I'm told the old stories live on inside me, run like rivers through my veins, even if I don't have a father around to tell me any new ones. And so I hold tight to those I've collected over the years, keep them close to the chest like old birds keep silver and gold. I guess that makes me some kind of a hoarder, but instead of precious metals, I'm a hoarder of tales and anecdotes I hope to never lose. Because if I do, then what? What happens to a story lost or misplaced? Does it disappear like an old sock? And what happens to the person a story is about? Do they cease to exist after we've stopped passing around their stories? After Poppy passed, I started writing in secret. I've never shared this with anyone. It all began with me curious me mopey and depressed, rooting through Poppy's bookshelves one afternoon looking for a dictionary so I could find the word contusion. I was just trying to learn more about Poppy's brain injury, but then I noticed another book. This one had a neon green cover that caught my attention. I picked it up and read the words 100 Years of Solitude. Also on the cover, birds and a snake, a fairy and ferns, a woman that looked like she was glowing in a deep forest the name Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I skimmed the pages, and the more I read, the stranger things got. Soon it was all ghosts and goldfish, prophetic curses and plagues of insomnia. It made my arms tingle. The words felt sweet on my lips as I read them aloud in the still, almost black of the room. It wasn't like the poetry or the fables we read in school. This was weirder. You could even say darker. I wouldn't call it that myself, but you could say it. I started devouring it, breezing through 10 to 15 pages a night after dinner or in the early a.m. before toast. The thing about poetry is that you can write what you want in whatever language you choose, with whatever instrument you have. The one thing that matters, the single requirement the only reason worth bothering with poetry in the first place 
is to leave the blank page better than it was before you found it. Thank you.